हाँ हाँ एक से एक से रोड गया ठीक है अब अटेंडी लिस्ट आ गई ठीक है और क्वेश्चंस आ रहे हैं ये रेड डीज अनम्यूट यार मेरे यहाँ नेटवर्क की भी प्रॉब्लम आ रही है हाँ हाँ चलें छोड़ दे पागल वो हाँ हाँ ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है तो कर रहा है ना रिकॉर्ड मेरे को तो करने की जरूरत नहीं है ना Hello. Yeah, I'm audible to everybody. Hello. Yeah, Tushar, uh, we would not be uh, unmuting the participants. Uh, in case you want to have any questions, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please write them in the question box and I'll be happy to answer your questions. So we should be starting in another uh, 10 minutes or so. Yeah, hi Dinesh, how are you? Actually, people are still joining. Uh, I would uh, assume that they should join another uh, 10 minutes or so. So we'll start the schedule time that's uh, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Indian time or 11.30 GMT. Hi, Paul. How are you? That's great, Pavan. So, guys, I think uh, by the time the rest of the people join, why don't uh, you introduce yourself? Uh, Tushar, Dinesh, Pavan, if you could just introduce yourself. Uh, and and tell me your expectation from the webinar. I'll be happy to handle that. Okay, Bhavan. Where are you pursuing your MBA from? Okay, great. Okay, great. And you have already been placed for summers? Okay, Tushar, that is great. 
So which analytics uh, firm are you working with? New Sigma? Okay, great. So I think the, the largest analytics firm in, in Bangalore, well, I think it is Mu Sigma, right? Okay, great. Actually, one of our uh, investors, uh, uh, he uh, he was uh, working with Mu Sigma, uh, Gagan Kumar. Now he's with Axel Partners. Uh, prior to Axel Partners, he was, I think, uh, uh, in the seat management for for Mu Sigma. That's why I know a bit about the firm. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Ali. Hi, Dinesh. Hi, Anand. Okay, great, uh, great Tushar. So this will be a very basic session on understanding uh, the NPV and the IRR. So, so I think it would make sense from CF level one perspective. Uh, this is a portion uh, that is relevant uh, from quant as well as corporate finance perspective. Uh, sure, then I'll send across the uh, the presentation, the Excel sheet to you. So it has two parts. One is the uh, the Excel sheet that we use to uh, to explain uh, one the time value of money, two discounted cash flows, three NPV, and fourth IRR. So if you ask me, uh, you will learn four concepts uh, through this webinar, uh, both uh, a bit theoretically as well as practically how they are incorporated in Excel sheets. So we will spend around. Um, uh, around 50% of our time understanding the concept and around 50% of our time putting that in Excel. I hope that is fine with everybody. Those who are giving the CFL level 1 examination uh, uh, might find the usage of calculator more relevant because in CFL exam you cannot use Excel spreadsheets. But I think from practical perspective uh, understanding uh, uh, the implementation Hi, Nikhil. Uh, hi, Dinesh. So, uh, so are you able to hear now, or uh, is the problem uh, persisting? Okay. So, in case you face any issues, uh, feel free to to point out uh, because um, uh, the uh, the voice seems to be erratic. So if you face problems, feel free to point out and I'll be happy to, um, uh, to sort of slow down and repeat uh, whatever you can't hear. That's fine. Sure, there is. So what I was uh, telling was that as in we start the session, uh, uh, we'll start with the, uh, the basic concepts. That's the uh, sort of the conceptual part of the understanding. And once we understand conceptually uh, uh, all the topics, then uh, we will also start moving.
to the implementation in Excel spreadsheet. I think this is a very simple Excel spreadsheet that we'll be implementing. So, uh, so you should definitely find it uh, relevant. Those of you who are giving the CFA level one examination, please remember that you cannot use Excel in the exam. So, so you should also use uh, your calculators to see uh, how to implement these particular concepts uh, for yourself. We will start in one minute or so. Am I audible to everybody now? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Pavan. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Fair enough. So, uh, let me start uh, with a basic understanding of what, uh, what NP and IR are. So, so before that, see the the way I, I plan to do it is that I'll um, I'll sort of uh, time the session like this. So I'll start with the uh, uh, with the introduction first. So I'll introduce uh, my firm and myself. I think it should take around uh, two minutes or so. Post the introduction part, uh, I'll I'll start with the basic conceptual understanding of time value of money. So we will try to understand the time value of money. Conceptually, what does it mean? Is that okay? And why is it relevant? So we will first of all, along with the introduction, uh, take a look at a case study. Is that okay? It's, it's a simple case study that will be used to illustrate the time value of money and its importance. Now, post understanding time value of money conceptually, we will also see how time value of money can be implemented in Excel. So sort of the, the understanding would be conceptually and then implementation in Excel. Post understanding time value of money, we will see what NPV is. That's the net present value. Is that okay? We will see conceptually what does it mean and why is it relevant. Is that okay? Then we will again implement uh, NPV in Excel. And finally, we will understand what IRR is. That's the internal rate of return and we'll implement that in Excel as well. So sort of it will be an interleaving uh, between the concept and the implementation in Excel. Overall speaking, uh, I think this should take around uh, two minutes. That's what my understanding is. Is that okay? The case study uh, again could take maybe one minute to understand. Post understanding, I think time value of money should, uh, should take around 10 minutes along with the implementation. The NPV and and its implementation should take around 10 minutes. Is that okay? IRR and its implementation should take around 10 minutes. Is that okay? And, uh, and obviously, we'll try to uh, to sort of uh, uh, integrate the three and then see what does uh, that all mean. I think the overall webinar from my end should take around 40 minutes, give or take a few minutes here or there, uh, depending on uh, what kind of questions come up. And then post that, we'll open it for questions. And whatever questions you have, I'll be happy to answer those questions. Uh, does the same find to everybody? Okay, great. Fair enough. Fine, fair enough. So let's start. Uh, this is a bit about Pristine. Pristine is a, is a leader in, uh, in finance trainings, authorized by the CF Institute uh, that conducts the CF examination by GARP that conducts the FRM examination, and by PREMIA that conducts the PRM examination. Uh, we have a topic expert model where we, uh, uh, where we uh, sort of engage topic experts to come and then take sessions with us. So, so, and apart from that, we serve a marquee list of clients like JPM, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Sinangam, Calcutta, etc. Primarily, our focus uh, has been on finance trainings from the very beginning. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we are authorized by the CF Institute to conduct the uh, uh, to conduct the uh, uh, trainings for uh, CFA examination in India. We conduct our uh, trainings for CFA level one, two, and three. Apart from that, uh, we are uh, authorized by uh, GARP to conduct. Uh, to conduct trainings for 
FRM in India. Uh, we conduct trainings for both FRM level 1 and 2. And apart from that, we are also authorized with Premia to conduct trainings for PRM across the world. Uh, we conduct our trainings across India, Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, Calcutta, Chennai, Hyderabad, Pune. Apart from that, uh, we conduct online trainings uh, where sort of people from across the world come and join our trainings. As I've already told you, we serve uh, a marquee list of clients, marquee as in, as in the most premier of the clients that we have. So we serve Ernst & Young, Bank of America, JP Morgan, primarily in the area of finance. And apart from that, list of uh, good B schools like National University of Singapore, I'm Calcutta, NISM, IEMR, etc. These are all our clients. As far as I'm concerned, I'm Parandeep. I'll take the session today along with uh, some help from Pavan. Uh, I have been a director and co-founder of uh, Edu Pristine uh, uh, for the last uh, four and a half years or so. Uh, prior to that, I was working as, a, as an investment banker with the Standard Chartered Capital Markets. Prior to that, I was working as a consultant with the Accenture Management Consulting. I did my MBA from uh, IIM Indore, and I did my engineering from IIT Delhi. So, so my profile primarily at uh, at Pristine has been to train people around quantitative uh, finance. Apart from that, around corporate finance, and then uh, taking uh, uh, people through sessions on financial modeling. So I cover sectors like real estate, uh, infrastructure, road cars, roads, power, etc. Apart from that, I also cover the FMC sector and the new emerging economy internet companies like Facebook, etc. So Anand has a question that my voice is echoing. Is it possible to fix? Uh, uh, is my voice echoing for other people as well? Uh, Tushar, Pavan? No, Tushar, etc. are finding it to be okay. Mm, Anand, I think the problem could be at your end. Uh, can you just use uh, uh, can you just use um, uh, a headphone? Nikhil again is, is finding it to be okay. So, Char, can you just use a headphone? I think that will uh, that might solve the problem for you. Yeah, yeah. So this is the case. Really, why don't you guys read this carefully? This is the case that we'll be using to illustrate uh, what IRR in TV and time value of money are. Hi, Vivek. How are you? Let's go through the case study and note the important parts in the case study. Okay. So let's see some of the important aspects of the case study. So, so if you see this, uh, essentially the investment in the project is is a billion dollars. Is that okay? So let's say in the year zero, if the project had an investment of a thousand million dollars, so for the first four years, they earn a rental income of ten million dollars each. Is that okay? And and post that the project is sold for nineteen hundred and sixty dollars. So if I would just uh, uh, draw the timeline of the cash. So so whenever you are uh, uh, solving any problem around time value of money, around NPV or IRR, anything related to cash, the first thing to do is draw the timeline of cash. Is that okay? So I draw the timeline of cash. Is that okay? So in the year zero, I see that there is an investment of thousand dollars. Is it okay? So when I say an investment, it's it's a negative cash. Is it okay? It's a negative cash of thousand dollars going out. Is that okay? Post that we have a positive cash flow coming in. So let's say this were year zero. Then in the year one, I have a positive cash flow of ten million dollars. So that's year one. Then I have into Again, ten million dollars coming in. So let me not use this. So this is a positive cash flow of ten million dollars. 
and this is another positive cash flow of $10 million. Then in the year 3, I again have a positive cash flow of $10 million. In the year 4, I have a fourth cash flow of $10 million. That's the building that is being operated for four years. Is that okay? In the fifth year, the project is sold off, and I get a huge cash flow of $1,906. Is that okay? So whenever you're trying to solve any problem uh, around around corporate finance, uh, the first suggestion I have for you is to draw the timeline and show all the cash flows. So so can you uh, can you see this? Would you be able to draw this uh, uh, the timeline of cash on your own? So I'll again repeat for you. So they secured a uh, funding of a thousand million dollars. This is using a zero. Is that okay? Then the project is operated for a period of four years, generating $10 million each year, so $10 million each year for the next four years, and then the project is sold for $1,960 million. Is that okay? So if I were to, um, uh, to, to sort of summarize the first step, uh, the first step is to understand the situation. understand the situation or the problem. The second step is to identify all, when I say cash, it's just the cash, please note that I'm not speaking about the accounting profit, it's the cash flows. So okay, I'm just speaking about the cash flows, please note this very, very carefully. So okay, once I identify the cash flows, I draw a timeline. And out there, all outflows are negative. And all inflows are positive. Are you guys with me? So that's the thing that I've done in the first part of the problem. So I identified the situation. I figured out all the negative cash flows. I figured out all the positive cash flows. All the negative cash flows I've shown in the red color. Is that okay? All the positive cash flows I've shown in the green color. And, uh, and the green means a positive, a red means a negative. Is this part clear to everybody? Abhishek, is this clear to you? Nikhil, Pavan? Okay. Okay, great. So if you're doing any problem around uh, CF level 1 as well, the first thing is to draw the timeline and identify all the cash flows. It should not take, take too long to do this. Rebecca has this clear view. Summers. Rampreet. Lalit. Okay. Summers. So once we have identified the cash flow, the next part is to understand what the situation is all about. Now obviously John's view, so let's figure out how much John took from the investors and how much did he get in return. Can you can anybody tell me what's the multiple that John has generated? So how much did John take for take to complete the project? And how much did he generate? What's the what's the multiple that he's able to generate? And tell me what is the multiple that John is able to generate from the project. So the multiple is a very simple uh, is a very simple concept. So if I were to just ask about what the multiple is, so let's say I want to find out what is the equity multiple that is being generated. So, so that's basically your your total money generated. So that's all cash divided by the money invested. Again, cash. That's called the equity multiple. So can anybody tell me what is the equity multiple that John is able to generate from the project? That's great. That's great, Anand. That's great, Abhishek. Okay, 
So what is the total money that he has invested in the project? Obviously, we know that he had invested a thousand million dollars in the project. What is the money that is being generated? The money that is being generated is ten million in the first year, ten million in the second year, ten million in the third one, ten million in the fourth one, and then nineteen hundred and sixty million in the last one. So if I total this up, this will come out to be like two thousand dollars that are being generated divided to thousand dollars that are being generated. So I say two times is the multiple that is being generated. Are you guys clear on this? It's called the equity multiple. Sure, Anand. Are mistake, Nikhil? Is this clear to you? Tushar, is this clear to you? Okay. So, okay, great. So obviously, as an uh, as an individual, he he is quite happy with this result. So what he thinks is that he had invested thousand and generated two thousand, so he's got on a cool two x multiple. Is that okay? Now he is quite happy with his performance and wants to raise another two thousand million dollars for his next next project. But the investors are not amazed; they are confused. So so they do not want to fund the second venture. So they think that their IRR expectation has not been met. So these are the two jargons we will be demystifying today. What is IRR? What is NPV? And why does such a good return not look good to the investors? Okay. So although we are able to generate a two times multiple, but still it does not look exciting to the investors. So where is the problem? And why is the problem? Is this part clear? Is the problem clear to everybody? Venkat, Asant, is the problem clear to you? Okay, great. So the first thing that uh, that we will try to understand today is the effect of compounding. Is that okay? That's the first thing that we will try to understand. And, uh, and the, the point is very, very simple. Is that okay? The point is very simple. So, so, so if you had any money, it has, uh, it has sort of uh, associated with it. A time value is okay? so for example let's say if 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 there is a 10% interest rate prevailing in the economy is it okay and and i were to give you 10 dollars today or let's say 100 dollars today is it okay so for me it's, it's a negative cash flow of 100 dollars is it okay what should you give me one year from now so if there is a 10% uh, interest in the economy, I am giving you $100 today. What should you give me one year from now? So this is year 0, this is year 1. What should you give me one year from now? So what is the total amount you should give me one year from now? That's great, Vishik. Uh, Anil, I think you need to use a, a better, a better microphone. Uh, the other thing, Anil, I see is that you are logged in twice, so that is why there is an echo. I think Anand was also facing the same problem, so you are logged in twice. So, so you can close one of the windows, and uh, I think things will become fine. Yeah. So. So can you tell me what should you give me one year from now? Tushar, can you tell me? 1248.7, why Tushar? If this one year, that's right Venkat, very good. So obviously there is a 10% uh, uh, PV of all investments. Okay, that, that, that's for the original problem that, that you have pointed out. I am right now at a very simple problem so yeah yeah great so so let's say if you were to give me uh, if I were to give you a hundred dollars today what should you give me one year from now the simple way to do is let's say my hundred dollars would earn an interest rate of 10 percent is that okay for one year that means my hundred dollars should become a hundred and ten dollars from now is that okay so this becomes a hundred and ten dollars from one year from now if the same interest rate were there, is that okay? And I were to give you 
uh, let's say I were to give you let's say a hundred and ten dollars one year from now is that okay and hundred and twenty one dollars two years from now is that okay what should you give me right now so that uh, my cash flow remains good okay there's a ten percent interest rate in the economy I am giving you a hundred hundred and ten dollars the one year from now please listen carefully and so there are two cash flows involved I am giving you a hundred and ten dollars one year from now yeah Teja you I you are actually muted Teja whatever questions you have or answers you have please write that in the uh, in the text box itself the same where you have written this one thank you so you I am giving you hundred and ten dollars one year from now and a hundred and twenty one dollars two years from now so what should you give me right now what should you give me right now so that uh, the cash flow say uh, stay balanced very good banker very good no this uh, no such it good good Pavan, good good Abhishek. Good Abhishek. Uh, no, Nikhil, not really, not really. Please note this carefully. So let me tell you the effect of discounting. We spoke about the effect of compounding out there. So my hundred dollars became one hundred and ten dollars. Is that okay? Now the point to note is that the worth of one hundred and ten dollars one year from now is actually just hundred dollars today is that okay so that is called discounting so if I were to say I want to find the discounted value that's the present value of cash that's the present value of cash out here present value of the cash is actually the future value of cash divided by 1 plus the rate raised to the power n so it is just the opposite of compounding is that okay so if I were to discount this hundred and ten dollars and get its value today, what would be the value? So it will be actually hundred and ten. No, the char hundred and ten divided by one plus ten percent raised to power one. That's the worth of hundred and ten dollars today. I'm giving you two cash flows. Please note that this is my first cash flow that I'm giving you, and this is the second cash flow I'm giving you. So what is the worth of this one twenty one dollars? So this again you need to figure out. Is that okay? So this we know is hundred hundred dollars. Please note that there are two cash flows. So the second cash flow again is actually worth one twenty one divided by one plus ten percent raised to part two. Is that okay? So the worth of this cash flow is again hundred dollars. So I'm giving you two cash flows. Is that okay? And both are worth hundred dollars. So if you were to compensate me accordingly you need to give me a hundred dollars for the first cash flow and a hundred dollars for the second cash flow so you need to give me two hundred dollars so that I am compensated accordingly is that okay uh, is this part uh, clear to you Nikhil so there are two cash flows and both have to be discounted to get the net present value So, so usually I see that uh, people sort of getting infused in this part. Please note that there are two cash flows and both have to be discounted and then added to get my value today. Tushar, is this clear to you? Yeah, yeah. Great. Anil, is this clear? Okay, great. No, not clear to you. So, Anil, I'll just explain this uh, once more. See, see the way things are functioning. There are actually two cash flows. If you see the timeline, if you see the timeline, this is the timeline. So, I am giving you a hundred and ten dollars one year from now. Is that okay? So, let's say ten percent is interest rate. So after one year, I'm giving you $110. Can you tell me what is its value today? That's right, Anil. So if I discount it back, 
the value of this $110 is actually $110 divided by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the power 1. Is that okay? So if I were to calculate the value, it comes out to be $100. To compensate for the first cash flow, you need to give me $100. Is this clear? And is this clear? Yeah. I am giving you one more cash flow, Anil, if you note carefully. And this cash flow is at the end of the second year. And this cash flow is actually worth $121.1. Is that okay? Now you need to compensate me for the first cash flow. And also you need to compensate me for the second cash flow. Now what is the value of this cash flow today? So at year zero, what is the value of this cash flow? It will be actually $121 divided by 1 plus 10 percent raised to the power 2 because it's, it's at the end of the second year. Is this clear, Arun? So this will again come out to be another $100. So you need to compensate me for both these cash flows. So the total cash that you need to give me is $100 for the first one and $100 for the second one. So you need to give me a total of $200. Is this clear now? Yeah. So, so the concept of NPV is very, very simple. All it says is essentially for all my cash flows in future, is that okay? All my cash flows in future, I need to discount them. Is that okay? I need to discount all the future cash flows, get them to the present value, add them together, and that's what the net present value of the cash flow is. Is that okay? Let me repeat it. So the third part to this problem is getting the discounted cash flows to the present value, adding them together and getting value. Is that okay? So once you've drawn the timeline, the fourth step is to discount all cash flows to present value. Is that okay? Discount all cash flows to present value. Is that okay? And add them together. Is that okay? So please note that adding is going to be very, very important. That's like the fifth step. This is called the present value. This is called the net present value of all the cash flows. Okay? This is called the net present value of all the cash flows. Are you clear on this? Yeah? Any questions around uh, this, if you can digest this? Is that okay? Yeah, so let me take up a question. So Venkat says that what is the discount rate in John's problem? Uh, the discount rate is not given, uh, Venkat. I'll come back to another concept called IRR, and, and then we'll compare against the IRR to come to a solution. Is that okay? So don't, uh, uh, so if you've understood the NPV, that's okay. Uh, we'll come back. Abhishek says n is the year and can n also start with n equal to 0. That is right, Abhishek, n can be 0 as well. In fact, in this case, if you see, n is actually 0. I, when I start, I do not discount the first cash flow. That is why I always say it is year 0. Is this clear, Abhishek? So n can actually start with 0 as well. Is that okay? So in second year, percentage rate, uh, uh, increases, then do we have to calculate accordingly? Uh, Nikhil, that is a uh, so so guys. What Nikhil has a question is that if if my rate changes over a period of time, let's say initially it was ten percent, then it came twelve percent, should I change the rate? Uh, Nikhil, it is not that easy to uh, to understand which rate to take. So so we need to have a uniform blended rate. Is that okay? So, so if the rate were changing, then then we would obviously need to you know the forward rates, etc. So right now, as I said, this case, assume that uh, the rate stays constant. So Anil says he missed the previous slides. Anil, uh, actually, we did not cover much in the previous slides. So I will anyway send across the slides to you. So don't worry about it. But this is a simple case that we are trying to tackle. 
John started his company where he required thousand million dollars. He generated ten million dollars for four years, and then he sold off the project for ninety sixty million dollars. Is that okay? So the first thing that we understood was to essentially identify the cash flows and draw them on a timeline. That's it. So we haven't covered much, so we haven't missed much. How do we calculate the NPV for a project which is um, uh, for one year and six months? So Colin has a question. If the if the project is for one year and six months, how do we calculate the NPV? So all you need to do is when you are dividing it by uh, let's say uh, let's say raised to power two instead of two, you can divide this cash flow like this one one twenty one divided by one plus ten percent raised to power one point five. Is that okay? I wish for you another uh, uh, function in Excel that can do this job for you in a, in a minute. Does that answer your question, uh, Colin? Uh, convert time and rate with respect to months. Mm. Uh, Venkat, can you be more specific uh, on your answer question? Okay, so we have already understood what NPV is. So I draw all the cash flows there. Is that okay? Discount them with the relevant uh, rate. Is that okay? And and that's what the NPV is. So cash flows divided by corresponding uh, discount rate raised to power n. Uh, Venkat's question would be convert the time and rate with respect to months. Uh, you can do that, or otherwise you can even take the year as 1.5. It doesn't matter too much. Let's say if it were coming after six months, you can do that as an yearly rate as well. So let's say 121 divided by 1 plus whatever 10 percent. That's the annual rate is to power 1.5. Okay, so both are equally good. Or you can convert the rate to uh, to a monthly rate and then raise it to power six. That is also possible. Both are equally good. Thank you. And I will show you another function in Excel that can do this job for you called the XNPV function. Okay. So if CFO, if you see as far as the NPV is concerned, I have the initial cash flow, then I have all the other cash flows that are there on the timeline. All I need to do is discount them. Is that okay? Now please note that if NPV is greater than zero, then the project should be accepted. If NPV is less than zero, then the project should be rejected. Is that okay? If NPV is zero, in the company is indifferent whether it should accept or not accept the project. So, so please note that NPV is a very, very important criteria to decide whether you should take on the project or not. Is that okay? Now let's go to John's problem and see how it is to be solved. So I have the year zero cash flow. I think Abhishek raised that question, can I have a year zero? Uh, Owen has a question, NPV equal to zero, does it mean a break-even project? Uh, that's right, it's, it's a time-weighted break-even project, Owen. But please note that this basic concept of break-even does not take into consideration the time value of money. Is that okay? So please note that now we're trying to solve John's problem. John had an investment of uh, of $1,000 million. That's the initial cash going out. Then he had these cash flows coming in. If I were to just see what we had drawn in John's case, so initial $1,000 million going out, then $10 million coming in, and in the end, $1,960 million coming in. So $1,960 million coming in. I am using an opportunity cost capital for the investors at 25%. So I think somebody asked me what the, uh, what the rate is. I'm using 25% rate. This is part clear to you guys. Is that okay? That's what their expectation is. So the first thing we need to do is draw the net cash flow. So all the outflows I will put as negative. Is that okay? So I put a negative sign in front of outflows and add to them the inflows. Is that okay? That's the way I told you all the outflows are negative and all the inflows are positive. Is that okay? All the outflows are negative, all the inflows are positive. That's the simple thing I've done. I have taken all the outflows as the investments is negative and all the inflows as positive. Okay, so I just add them together. That gets me the net cash flow. So understanding the situation, identifying the cash, 
and drawing that on timeline. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the net cash flows. I want to discount. You all know that discounting is pretty simple. All you need to do is, uh, is divide all the cash flows. Divided, so cash flow divided by 1 plus the rate raised to power n. Is that okay? So I want to do it like this. Cash flow divided by 1 plus the rate, which in this case is 25%. My product is a dollar, so that when I copy to the right, it does not move. Raised to the power number of years. Is that okay? Year zero means zero year. One year, two year, three year, and four year. All I'm doing is one upon. So I am just taking this as as cash flow divided by one plus the rate raised to the power n. Is that okay? And then I will sum this all up to get the NPV. Okay, so let me pass this to the right so that I can find out all the discounted cash flows for me. So please note that worth of $1960 million five years from now is actually just $642 million. So Colin has a question, should inflation be considered uh, while preparing the DCF since we are discounting cash flows value? That is right. Usually, uh, Colin, what would happen is that if, if your uh, cash flows are expected to rise at the inflation rate, you would take that into consideration. But you should not take the inflation into into the discount factor. Is this clear, Colin? I'm assuming that whatever is the cash that is to be uh, uh, dispersed would be sort of invested at the same rate at which your opportunity cost is there. Is this clear, uh, Colin? So if I were to find out the total NPV, NPV is very simple. I'm going to sum up all the cash flows. Is that okay? All the discounted cash flows to get the NPV. So NPV is actually sum of all the cash flows divided by 1 plus rate raised to power n. If you notice carefully, my NPV is negative in this case. Is that okay? A negative NPV means the project should not be taken, should not have been taken. So when get to the question, the NPV of John's project is minus three thirty four million dollars. That is right. That is why the project should not have been taken. So please note that. Uh, uh, please note that uh, in this case, the investors had a higher expectation. So they were expecting to generate twenty five percent, and that is why your NPV was not met. Is that okay? So so please note this thing very carefully. So higher expectation rate, so a high R implies low net present value. Is that okay? A high R implies a low net present value. Is that okay? Because it is, it is there in your denominator, so higher the R, lower the NPV. And higher the cash, higher the NPV. So higher the cash implies higher net present value. Is this part clear to everybody? So when I'm trying to take on any project, I would like to take it as to, uh, uh, with a higher cash flow, with a lower expectation. Is that okay? And please note that lower than earlier you get the cash, better the NPV. Is that okay? So earlier cash means better NPV. Is this part clear to everybody? So we have three parameters, the cash, the discount rate, and the time. So higher the cash, higher the NPV, higher the cash, um, sort of uh, earlier the cash, better the NPV. Uh, higher R means lower NPV. Better NPV obviously power means higher NPV. So obviously better means higher. Is this clear power? So these three things you should uh, take care very, very carefully. So if I were to just calculate the multiple that is being generated, so multiple that was generated, if I were to just calculate the multiple from the net, net cash flow, I just sum if. So I'm going to use minus sum if. From this range, I take all the positive cash flows. And I divide this by some if from this range I take all the negative cash flows. That means my revenue divided by the investments. Is it okay? 
you can see that I generate a 2x multiple. So, okay, I am able to generate a 2x multiple, still the project does not good, look good to the investors. Even though I am able to generate a 2x multiple, it does not look good to the investors. So I have a better multiple. So the multiple of 2x still the IRR is, is less than 25%. Still I am coming to NPV. Still NPV is negative. Is that okay? So even though John generated a two times multiple on the investment, is that okay? That's what we found in the beginning. Still the net present value is negative. Is that okay? Are you clear on this? Are you clear on the concept of NPV and the multiple and the cash flows? Great, great, that is good. Great. So now that we understand NPV, let's spend uh, another five minutes to understand what IRR is. So IRR is again a very, very simple concept. It is the R, it's the rate at which your NPV is zero. Is that okay? It's the rate at which NPV is zero. Now that's a that's obviously a, a, a sort of a, a theoretical definition. So what does IRR means? Otherwise, IRR is, is sort of you can say a blended rate for all the years. Is that okay? So it's the rate, single rate. Please note that I am not changing the rate. It's a single rate. at which I should discount all my cash flows. Is that okay? So, so please note that the important part to note is the single rate. Is that okay? It is a single rate at which I should uh, discount all my cash flows so that my NPV becomes zero. Is that okay? So somebody pointed out earlier, does it seem like a break-even rate? So yeah, so on a time-valued basis, yes. It is almost like break-even rate on a time-valued basis. Is that okay? So please note that this formula is, is same as the NPV formula. So it's the sum of all the cash flows divided by 1 plus the rate raised to power n. So the rate at which, so if r is equal to IRR, then your NPV becomes 0. Is that okay? So that's what IRR means. Is that okay? Now, the important things to note is that obviously IRR, uh, uh, you need to solve this NDV equation to get to the IRR. So usually the solution to IRR is going to be iterative in nature. Is that okay? And again, if I were to use if IRR greater than zero, then you should accept the project. If IRR is less than zero, you should reject the, pro the project. Is that okay? So this is an important concept to note. That is right, uh, Venkat, IRR is the rate at which your NPV is zero. Uh, I mentioned a single rate, yeah. So if you look uh, carefully at the niche, uh, I am discounting all the cash flows with a single rate, not with different rates. Okay, so IRR is this sort of a single rate at which you should discount. There could be more than one uh, uh, IRR. Please note that uh, actually this is a n degree equation, right? If if I would write this carefully, so if if you would note this carefully, so my n p v is equal to let's say what whatever C F zero plus cash flow one divided by one plus rate plus let's say cash flow two divided by one plus rate squared. So so it's a n degree equation. Actually speaking, yeah, there could be more than one solutions to R, right? But, but please note that the project would just have a single IRR. So, so, so when R is equal to IRR, this implies that NPV should be zero. Is that okay? That's what the definition is. So please note that you could have two solutions to this R. Is that okay? At which your NPV becomes zero. Right? But that does not mean the project has two IRRs. That's just a mathematical equation. Is that okay? So the project will have a single IRR. So Venkat has a question, under what circumstances would a project have more than I and one IRR? No, no Venkat. Project would have a single IRR. Is that okay? But this equation could have multiple solutions. Is that okay? This is a mathematical equation. 
yeah, it could have multiple solutions, but the project will have a single IRR. Is this clear, Venkat? Okay, great. So, any other questions that you have around what IRR is? So, Colin has a question: Is IRR calculated on the cash flow or the DCF? IRR is calculated on the DC on the on the cash flows, actual cash flows. Is this clear, uh, Colin? IRR is on the actual cash flows. In NPV case, the value of R can be different, but in IRR, the rate will remain the same. That is right, Anil. So the rate will remain same. But if you get two IRRs, which one should you choose? Um, uh, again, uh, we could, uh, if you look at the IRRs, one of the solutions would be absurd in nature. Is that okay? So, so the one that looks closer to what the expectation is. That's the one you should take. Do companies actually use this? Yeah, Tushar, definitely. All the projects that you undertake have to get the NPV and the IRR right. So, so we do multiple projects around around real estate, around actual companies, uh, DCS valuation. Everywhere NPV and IRR is used. Everywhere. So, so this is not a theoretical concept. This is a very very practical concept, and is used across the industry extensively. Which one is better, NPV or IRR? Uh, theoretically speaking, Anil, NPV is, is a better measure. But um, practically speaking, when we speak about the industry, actually most of the people are, are concerned about the IRR. So statisticians use it to impress investors more. Uh, uh, Venkat, this is not a statistician problem. This is actually very, very uh, you can say practical thing that is used across the industry. It is not a theoretical concept. NPV IRR is not a theoretical concept. So if you see term sheets that are given out by the investors, they have stuff written around IRR, contractual agreements around IRR. So if you go to any real estate project, there will be contractual agreements that say that I should get an IRR of 25% from the project. Is that okay? So there will be contractual agreements around this. So this is not a theoretical concept. NPV and IRR is not a theoretical concept. It is a very, very practical concept and is used extensively across the industry. Right? So let's see how we can implement IRR in Excel. Excel has given a very good, uh, uh, you can say, a function to calculate IRR. You can just say IRR show it all the actual cash flows. Please note that I'm not using discounted cash flows. Just use the actual cash flows and what you get is your IRR is 15%. Is that okay? So your project IRR in this case is 15%. Is that okay? Whereas the expected IRR is 25%. So this is less than your expected IRR so you should not take the project. Okay. So to shout out the question, uh, so you use the forward rates, forward spot rates, uh, um, when uh, uh, rate changes. Uh, there is no spot rate out here, to shout it's, it's a simple concept. <coughs> is the rate at which you should discount to get your NPV zero? I mean, what what should I repeat? How do I get the IRR? I'll I'll send you this Excel sheet in any case. All you need to do is use this function called IRR. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Dinesh. I'll send you the spreadsheet as well, along with the annotation that I'll send this across to you. Uh, so, Sachin has a question. If we have a negative cash flow after year one, say, for example, year three, does it impact our IRR? Definitely, it will. So, for example, let's say if I were to take this as minus 20. Is that okay? You can see that my, which uh, is a very small change, let's say minus, uh, let's say 200. You will see the impact. You can see that my IRR has dropped further. Is this clear? So it does impact your IRR. What is the formula used to put, uh, uh, there is a simple formula called IRR. Let me, Copy the formula for you. 
So that's the formula I've used here. That's the formula I've used here. Is this clear, Anil? I sent this spreadsheet to you. You can take a look at it. What is the opportunity cost? Uh, what if the opportunity cost changes during the period? Rajesh, this assumes that opportunity cost remains the same. So, for example, if you were to get some cash back, you would be able to invest it at IRR. That's what the assumption is. Uh, Pavan is a question, uh, when inflation is present, uh, see Pavan, as far as the inflation is concerned, that would just change the cash flow, is that okay, that does not change anything else. So the effect of inflation would be in the cash flow, let's say your expected cash flow will become from 10 to 11, from 11 to let's say 13, from 30 to 15, that's what inflation is, is going to play a role in. Can you give me Tushar, as a question? Can you give me a link uh, of such real life case studies where the project has taken not taken uh, uh, Tushar getting real life case studies uh, um, on the internet is, is 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 difficult, not possible. But we do have uh, case studies based on actual transactions that have happened that we take in our uh, classes. So Pavan says, what if the inflation is uh, is five percent? So you can assume the inflation to be five percent and incorporate that. So let's say uh, instead of this, you can insert another <coughs> row for inflation and and increase this by five percent. Let's say. So these will be the cash flows. Is this clear? Is this clear to you? So, so that I wasn't here from the start, but who decides the opportunity uh, cost rate in real projects? Vasudha, what happens is that each fund would have their own uh, mandate. So, for example, when they raise their money from their limited partners. So, if you see the way the industry is structured, you need to raise money. Each fund raises their own money. And when they raise the money, uh, their limited partners give them an expectation about what uh, what the rate is that they are expecting. Is it okay? So if you see the way this industry works, so what happens is that for each fund, let's say this, if this is a company that is functioning, is that okay? Let's say this is a factory. Uh, you need money to, to fund this factory. Typically, this would either come from the markets, is that okay? Or it could come from a private equity investors. Or it could come from a bank, is that okay? So markets have their own return. You can get to know the return through the capital model, which says that the expectation of return is essentially the risk-free rate. Is that okay? Plus beta multiplied by RM minus RF. That's the way they do it. Private equity investors further raise their money. Is that okay? From rich people, pension funds, etc. Is that okay? When they get the money. They give them uh, an expectation saying that I want let's twenty five percent return. So that's the IRR that they expect to earn. That's the return that markets expect. Similarly, if they get the money from the bank, so the bank has its own expectation. We could say that let's say I want the risk free rate, so plus a premium. Is it okay? This could be a small premium, so it could be let's say simple, let's say LIBOR plus um, uh, plus let's say two percent point based on that. So based on the investor you would have an expectation. Does that answer question was Vasudha? Uh, so Anil has a question if you take an example of investing money in a mutual fund or an equity then we also consider inflation to accumulate IRR. That's right. If NPV is greater than zero then we should always accept the project. That's right Pavan. If the NPV is greater than zero we should accept the project. If the inflation rate uh, uh, given in the examination, Dinesh, yeah. if the uh, question requires it, the inflation rate would be given. Fair enough. Anything else that you would like to know as far as NPV IRR is concerned? 
So if you were to build a, a build a model uh, for John's performance, that's how you need to do. First, build the assumptions. That's the assumption part. Is it okay? Draw the net cash flows. Is that okay? Then draw the discounted cash flow. So discounting is pretty simple. I will draw the discounted cash flows. So my discounted cash flow is essentially the cash flow divided by one the rate is per n. Add that together and get the NPV. Use the IRR formula to get the IRR. Uh, there's a question, please tell how the banks provide investment. Banks, you can take a loan from the bank in the form of debt. You need to pay an interest on that. What if NPV and IRR give opposite results? In that case, please accept the result of NPV, not IRR. So NPV is a better measure. Use NPV to do that. Vasudha has a question. Please spend some time on CAPM. Vasudha, uh, I would do that probably in the next webinar. So, um, real rate and discount rate are the same. I don't understand your question for what the real rate is. Can two projects be compared based on IRR? Definitely yes. You could compare them on the basis of IRR. But NPV is a better measure because IRR does not take into consideration the, the size of the project. NPV is a better measure. Please turn again the multiple generated. Multiple is simple, so essentially your investment divided by so your revenue divided by investment. So if you had come in time, that's the equity multiple that is being generated. So my money generated in cash divided by the money invested. Uh, please suggest a good book for corporate finance. Uh, you can uh, take a look at Braley Myers. Pavan, you can take a look at Braley Myers. Is IRR post-tax calculation per employee? Uh, uh, you need the cash flows out here. So, so these cash flows need to be post all the cash going out. So yes, they are post-tax. So these cash flows are actually post-tax. So what would you do post this? We do keep conducting these uh, webinars again and again. So two things that you can do, uh, post this uh, webinar easily. One, you can join a newsletter, blogs, etc. You can go to edpristine.com slash blog and join the newsletter. So you can join the newsletter out here. Is that okay? So we do give other uh, free stuff as well that you can use our website uh, to do. We would be regularly conducting webinars around uh, around uh, basics of finance. That is where you could uh, sort of uh, uh, gain more knowledge around finance. Apart from that, we do offer structured courses in finance as well where we cover CFA level 1, 2, 3, FRM, part 1, 2, PRM, financial modeling, Excel for project managers, finance, non-finance, fixed income, leverage buyouts, etc. So there's a host of courses that we conduct uh, uh, around finance. If you are interested in joining any one of them, feel free to go to our site and join these courses. So let me take uh, one or two more questions and then we'll end the webinar. Is it advisable to prepare for the CFA examination? by preparing online through Pristine, I would say it depends on your, on your choice, Anil. Uh, but uh, we do have a good program for, uh, for CFA, which is again sort of the content has been vetted by CFA Institute. So if it interests you, you can join that. So Anil has a question, if I'm non-finance background, please advise the strategy to prepare. Uh, so start early, Anil, that will be very, very useful. Apart from that, I'll give you my email ID. Feel free to write an email to me, and I'll, have, I'll be happy to take on personal questions. So please note down my email ID. Email ID is Paramdeep at edupristine.com. You can also write an email to Manab at edupristine.com. So, Tushar has a question, how easy to switch a career to finance uh, giving CFA? I would say CFA provides you the basic knowledge that is required for any job, Tushar. Of course, the idea is up to you to generate the right opportunities. So, 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 I would not say it is easy, but at the same point of time, I would say that this is a very, very helpful course. So, 
call in as a question regarding my query on NPV for a project of 1.6 months. What are you going to show a shortcut in Excel? Call in, you can use this function. So, for example, let's say if my uh, if my project had like this, so so let me stop our new Excel sheet. Let's say if my project had uh, had these cash flows. Let's say first of January 2010, then it had a cash flow on let's say first of January 2011, then it had a cash flow on let's say 31st of March 2012, then it had a cash flow on let's say first of September 2013. So I had initially invested, let's say, $1,000, then I got, let's say, $100, then let's say I got $200, and then let's say I got $1,400. If I want to find out the NPV, I can use this function called XNPV. Can you see this uh, function, Colin? XNPV. It is asking me for a rate. Let's assume the rate is 10%, or let's say 25%, as we were using earlier. The values of the cash flows, these are the values of the cash flows, and the dates. Okay. So even if you have, uh, let's say, different dates to uh, on which the cash flow is there, you can use this function called X and PV. Similarly, if you want to find out the IRR with different dates, you can just use X IRR, show it all the values of the cash flows and the dates. Okay, so in this case, the NPV, the IRR is 17%. Does that answer your question, Colin? So Rajesh the question, does Pristine conduct uh, classroom coaching in Delhi? Yes, Rajesh, it does. Uh, you can uh, get in touch with me. My email ID is pristine.com. I'll be happy to guide you about our, um, uh, about our trainings. Abhishek has a question, does the exam happen only twice a year? That's right, Abhishek, it's only twice a year. So how CFA will help me in getting a job in future? You can write me an email. I'll help you um, uh, clear your doubts about uh, your career, Anil. If I have to pursue an MBA in finance, to help me uh, in my CFA or vice versa. Definitely, Vasudha. So we do conduct trainings that, let's say, I am Calcutta, I am Indore, etc. And I can tell you from my experience that hundreds of people are giving CFA examination from these good B schools. So which is better, CFA or MBA finance? Uh, <laughs> I would, uh, uh, am I audible to you? CFA or MBA finance? Uh, see, I would say that if you can do an MBA finance uh, from, from a good B school, that means top 10 B school, then go for MBA finance. There is no comparison between MBA finance and CFA. Those are like uh, uh, those are like uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, complementary uh, subjects. So uh, so so they are not competing subjects. So they are not competing things. So so you can sort of uh, do both an MBA as well as a CFA. Both will be useful to you. Actually, I seem to have lost the question thing, just hold on. So MBA, finance and CFA are not competing with each other, they are completely different things. Anything else that you would like to ask, feel free to ask or else I'll just close the uh, webinar. Can you mail, uh, can we mail you regarding a personal uh, career counseling? Yeah, Vasudha, you can send across an email. I'll forward it to the relevant person who can take it forward from there. How to get into financial analysis, analytics? Uh, again, to Tushar, please write an email. Uh, all the career questions I'll answer separately on emails. Job prospects for CFA holders in India, and they'll just send me an email. I'll be happy to answer whatever I'll be able to answer. Any other questions around NPV or IRR? So I thank you all for your patience. Uh, for the next minute, see you. So thanks, thanks, Dinesh. Thank you all for your patience. I look forward to speaking to you in the next webinar that we conduct. And probably if you are in Delhi or Bombay, we could meet as well.
Thank you all for your time and patience. I, I look forward to seeing you sometime later. Thank you and bye-bye.